Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable start to your week. Um, it's It's been one for me. Uh, today marks the turning of the pages and a start of a new chapter in my life. And I'll just leave it at that. I have no desire to speak on it, but outside of the fact that that's where I'm at. Uh, so before I get started on this again, if you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, the work that I've been doing for literally decades, uh, if you believe in that, if you believe in my passion and my love for my people and the things that I have committed myself to do despite all kinds of different challenges, show some love and donate we need your support the work we do does not take place without cost and i absorb as much as i possibly can of it but i need you guys to show some love and support the work i do uh, i'm not gonna go into depth on it uh the link to the website is there if you want to learn more about me and don't know about me for those of you who have followed me for years you know it you either approve or, or you don't or you, you're good with me or you're not all that. Uh, so I'm gonna get right into it uh, because I don't plan on spending any too much more, too much of my time on it. I'm gonna deal with it. I'm gonna get where I'm going and I'm gonna get out and try to unwind. I need to do that. Um, so everybody's buzzing right now because Charleston White has. Basically, put it the way that the wording goes uh, is Charleston White exposes Lil Boosie um, and Marlo Mike for uh, multiple murders. And you know, there's a recent killing of a jeweler uh, that was supposed to be bringing some stuff to a crap game or gambling, you know situation and you anybody from the hood understand what goes down in situations like that it's not any different uh from what takes place in the hood and what takes place in situations like this except there's a lot more money involved um and anywhere there's money there's gonna be shady people looking to do shady shit uh it's just the way it is um now a lot of people are talking about with charleston White coming out and saying all that that you know he's got to look out people are going to put a put a label on his back and all that look number one is dude is not new to the game uh, he knows what he's doing he's willing to sit up and take a risk for what he's doing uh, I'm not here to question his motives I'm not here to do any of that what I'm here to talk about is something I think is a little bit more deeper and you know me I'm never on the surface I'm never just looking at the bullshit on the surface I'm looking at all the other things that are going on underneath the surface and how it impacts us all because uh, there are a bunch of people that are sitting up and say well you know this is celebrity bull crap this is this and this and that but my thing is a lot of this plays out of regular hood mentality and uh, screwed up codes. So uh, to, to put it all out there, they're, they're having this crap game. A dude shows up to sell some jewelry, gets robbed and killed. Uh, number one is, I don't know what idiot, uh, excuse me, I'm just sorry, what idiot thinks it's okay to show up with hundreds of thousands, maybe millions in jewelry with no crew, no security, just rolling like that. I mean, I grew up in the hood. I've seen the worst of the worst. You know, I've been through a lot myself. And I am, you know, I mean, just the idea and thought of that. You know, I'm nowhere near, you know, as famous and popular as them. But when I was doing what I was doing, you know, you can check some of the pictures on my some of my accounts that shows me before the transformation. I think that's how I got the album. Uh, before the transformation. If you look at it, I've got a bodyguard. I mean, you just don't move in that world without having somebody cover your cover your six. It's just stupid. Well, anyway, he shows up from what everybody's saying, dude does not have protection. 
uh, no security, nobody looking out for him. He ends up dead uh, and everybody's quiet, nobody's saying anything. And so Charleston White's come out now and not only to talk about that, and he said he doesn't really care about dude because dude is supposedly from Chicago. Um, you know, Drake or Jake or Duke or whatever, uh, the jeweler from Chicago. Um, and he says he doesn't really cut for dude because he's from Chicago and, you know, he's showing up to a crap game with a bunch of... I mean, it just doesn't make good sense for somebody that's up on game that comes from the hood, legitimately comes from the hood. It just doesn't make sense. I don't care who you are, how well you think you're known. Uh, you just don't roll like that. Um, but anyway, it cost him his life. Love and prayers go out to his family. Um, pretty sure there are people who loved him. I'm pretty sure there are people who depended upon him. And now he's gone. Um, this is all surface stuff, though. This is life's loss and senselessly, but it's surface stuff. So here we go. He talks about it. Now, what he gets in deep is he doesn't just talk about this. He talks about Marlo Mike, who is this young cat who is doing life without parole, uh, who's just lost his last appeal. So he's never coming home. He's there forever. Uh, he started supposedly, uh, based on what they're saying, he started um, doing hits for Boosie at the age of 14, got popped at 16, uh, had at least five bodies on him at 16, and he, you know, did the time. Supposedly this cat has a tattoo on his chest says, who's next, Boosie? Now, I know for a fact that Boosie's got him in his record, which is dumb, but okay. Now, the whole thing is, the reason I'm even talking about this isn't all that. That's superficial. Now, I'm getting to why I'm talking about it. I'm not no jock rider, no fan. I, I You know, I know a little bit about Charleston White, you know, I, you know, something, but you know, I just know, you know, everybody got their own thing. They're doing their own thing. I'm not here to knock anybody that ain't hurting nobody. Uh, but uh, I, I ain't crazy about the fact that he gave a shout out to DJ Academics because this dude ain't been doing number wreaking havoc and shooting bull for a minute. So anybody that cuss for academics, outside of the fact, academics has called out some stuff of some predators that's in the hood and, and, and that's what I want to talk about the reason that I'm actually big up in what White did isn't because I'm riding this jock I, I actually don't like I actually like Boosie but here's the problem we're so caught up in celebrity that we give passes where passes don't do how many passes did we give to R. Kelly before we had to sit up and finally say and some people are still doing that now, I'm not saying you don't appreciate this cat's genius you don't appreciate what he do I've got multiple kids made to this dude's music seriously I know they were because that's the shit I was playing back then when I made some of my kids but 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 at no time and it's those same kids that's gonna make me sit up and say what you did was bullshit dude it's that's and, and the thing is I know what he went through. I know he was molested as a child, but we don't get passes to keep passing down trauma. We can't do that. We have to sit up and say, at some point, it ends here. At some point, I'm going to be accountable. At some point, I will not pass down this poison. My problem is how we give passes to celebrities and we'll, we'll rip and critique and go through every minute detail of the average person who's just trying to make it. But we'll give pass after pass after pass after pass to somebody simply because they got a little loot or they, 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 they're they famous. And, and that's because we are still living vicariously through the lives of people we uh, deem successful because deep down inside, we don't believe that we'll ever achieve success. And the thing is, number one is, we haven't even got to the point where we can for ourselves define success. We're still judging success based off of what society and the media has told us success is. We're chasing bags when the truth of the matter is, I would much rather have impact because I understand that if I have a significant enough impact, I'll get the bag, I'll create the bag, but I want impact. I want people to say he helped me change my life. 
I want people to sit up and say, man, when I was at my worst, I came to this dude and instead of judging me, he sit down and talked to me. That's why I'm sitting out. All these cats that I'm sitting up saying need to be called out, I'll sit down and I'll talk with any of them and I'll work with them to the end to try to heal. But I'm not going to co-sign your BS. I'm not going to tell you it was okay. I'm not going to tell you, man, you good. Uh, free this person. Free No, if you did the crime, you need to be somewhere sitting still until you get the help you need. Some people are just natural predators and it's in their DNA now. All they are is killers and they need to be where they're at. That's just the reality of it. I understand that a lot of that was birthed out of us not protecting them, us not properly socializing them, us not being good models of manhood at a level that allowed them to understand what manhood was. I understand that. I understand. But at some point, you become responsible for your choices. At some point, you come, you become responsible for your decisions. At some point, you have to sit up and say, I can't keep pointing the finger at someone else. I've got to own my own shit. And that's the thing that I'm looking at. You know, when we need to start calling them out and calling a spade a spade, we need to stop giving so much clout to rappers who are sitting up pumping our kids full of our heads full of stuff that most of them not only are not doing but have never done. They got our kids riled up and amped up on stuff that they're not doing. They're not even letting their kids listen to their music, but they're sitting up and they're letting an industry pump that bull crap into the heads, into the minds uh, of our people. That, and our babies and it's our responsibility to do something about that it's our responsibility to sit up and say this cannot fly this is not this is unacceptable and then to do something about it as far as whether or not charleston white is snitching you know again here we go with these codes I have a problem with, I, I believe every community has to have codes. And I, I have on the Odyssey Project, uh, uh, the Odyssey Project 21.top, uh, I have a, a complete code of conduct. I've sat down and I've talked to some of the heavyweights uh, that came before us. Um, you know, the one, ones that still live in, I think of Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, I talked to him about the blueprint 2.0 which is also on there i talked to his wife joanne about it and my whole thing is you can't have a community without a code of conduct there has to be code of conduct there has to be a protocol there have to be protocols there have to be agendas i put them out there they're out there and when i tell you i've done work i've done work it's just not popping up on youtube and talking my work speaks for me it's out there in volumes of books it's out there with almost a thousand articles on that one site about our dilemmas addressing all the bull crap that's thrown our ways like the black on black crime myth and why we have to be aware of why that exists and how they're using it on down the line i've been doing it forever but let me tell you something that the, 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 there has to be codes but there are codes in the community now that have been morphed into something that they were never initially meant to be and for instance the no snitching rule the no snitching rule is actually, if you go back and trace it back, the no snitching rule is actually a code between thieves. It is a code between two or three or more people who got together to do something. One person gets popped and in order to lighten their sentence, they tell on whoever the others are that the cops don't know. That's what the no snitching thing is. We go out and do something together. Yo, dumb ass, get caught. You don't say nothing. You take that You take that lick by yourself. That's what the whole thing is. You don't get to shoot my goddamn kid. And then the snow, no snitch rule say, I can't tell and I know who did it. See, I'm going to tell you why that code is, 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 has been morphed. It, it hasn't just been morphed by black people. It's been morphed by media influence to sit up and say, you can't tell. Here's why. Because now the code implies I'm not going to tell law enforcement. I don't trust law enforcement. Good reason. But I'm not going to tell law enforcement. I'm going to handle it myself. Well, guess what happens then? A perfectly law-abiding person loses somebody to a, a, a criminal-minded person. And now, because of the code, has to become a criminal themselves to settle a score that the system could settle. And now you are locked up. So you were taken away from your family after someone else was already taken away from your family or harmed. 
and three birds, two birds, three birds, however many birds with one stone. You have to understand how this dynamic works. Am I saying fall in love with law enforcement? Hell no, there's some dirty. Let me be careful because I've had help from people. The system is screwed. Don't trust the system beyond what you see an individual do and prove to you with their consistent behavior. There are some people out there, man, in law enforcement that go hard in the paint that literally are the ones who go out and find these people who killed your kids and literally live with that. Take that shit home every day. I know because I talk to them. That shit means something to them and they don't care about color. There are some people out there like that. Then that's some people in our damn hood look just like us that are snakes. We're going to have to learn how, number one, to be true to ourselves. That means being true to who we are. I'm unapologetically black, but I understand that a lot of the doors that were open for me weren't opened by blacks. As a matter of fact, a lot of blacks tried to stop me. I know a lot of blacks try to undercut me. I still get more heat from blacks. And it's a shame, but it is. I don't trust any white person beyond what they prove to me. It's just, and, and people will tell you that. I don't trust a white person beyond what they prove to me with their character because I have seen enough to know not to. But I've also have had to learn that all skin folk ain't kin folk. Here's the problem. It's time to stop immortalizing celebrities based on nothing but celebrity based on nothing but fame based on nothing but the bad you know they're who you see on tv they're who you hear on the radio you know they are not idols they are not models most of them are modeling shitty ass screwed up anti-social behavior that will get your kid locked up get your kid killed get your kid raped get your kid in a situation where they are being mishandled and mis mistreated by some dude that doesn't know how to treat them and and and, and 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 you're sitting up thinking that this no they're not they're not the models we need to get models we need to be models we need to sit up number one we need to re visit the idea of family we need to revisit the idea of marriage and the sanctity of marriage at a level that we care enough about our future not just our personal future but the future of our lineage what our children and their children and their children are going to do to the point to where we find a way to stick together to unite to create families and households Every time I look up, there's a broken household. Every time I look up, everybody is into me, 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 me. Nobody gives a damn about what's going to happen in the future. Everybody's just trying to get something. And I'm telling you, I've been that person that's had a lot. And at some point, you realize that is not going to be enough to solidify a legacy. That's not going to be enough to speak of me beyond the time that I spend here. That selfishness that is just about me as long as I get my mentality is destroying an entire race. I'm trying to get people to understand something. I'm trying to get people to see something. And it's so difficult because everybody is being taught and fed based on what the media de determines is proper, what the media determines is best. And that's not what we need to be focused on. We need to take a real serious look at where we are as a people. We need to take a real serious look at, at where we are as fathers, as where we are as husbands, where we are as mothers and wives, where we are as parents, where we are as business leaders and operators in our community, what we are going to do to change things. Um, like I said, I don't know the overall motive of what's going on. If it's just the platform for this dude to do what he's doing and he's monetized it or if he's just tired or if he's calling all the BS. I know he said he has an issue with hip hop and he calling all of it out. Uh, man, hip, hip, hip hop hasn't been hip hop for so long. I don't dare call what I see today hip hop. I, I, I call that a, 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 a mess of mishandling. In in, 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 I mean, mammoth proportions, where we sit up and fumbled an entire culture, 
into the hands of the enemy and we're still funneling and funding it. We didn't just give it to them. We're still pumping money into it. We're pumping our blood and sweat into it. We're turning our kids over to it. We're letting it babysit our kids. And we're wondering why we keep getting what we're getting. Why I got to wake up every day and somebody has set a case on my desk where some black person has killed another black person. Many times a black male killing a black female or worse, some, some black female or male killing a ba black baby. Nobody's safe. And we're walking around like everything's cool. We're so selfish minded that until it lands on our door, we don't give a damn. Then all of a sudden we want everybody to rise up and help us. We want everybody to rise up and speak for us. We want everybody to be a voice with us when we need to be standing together before it ever gets to our door. Why does it have to hit your door before you realize it's coming? It's coming because we aren't together, because they can get us in so many different ways and not reap any real true consequence on a collective level because we don't know how to unite and behave collectively. Now, I'm going to close it out with this. To be fair. I'm not one of them people that, 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 that sits up and thinks these kids, because they do this, this, and this, are absolutely abhor abhorrible, abhorrent and are horrible and the worst of the worst and, and all this and, 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 and not be aware of the fact that number one is there's not a group that didn't have an underground economy. The Italians were poor, the poorest of the poor when they got here. Their underground criminal activity literally, literally underwrote their ability to buy their way into the Caucasian status because they weren't initially considered Caucasian or white. They were considered uh, immigrants and they were poor. And you can watch this with the Asians. You can watch this with the Arabs. You can watch this in a lot of different ways. The Irish. Hell, you know, how do you think the Kennedys got to where they got? Y'all need to research Joe Kennedy. So the idea that I'm going to sit up and say, you know, the hell with all of what I'm gonna say is, let's stop destroying one another. Let's get our minds together. Let's start to think. Let's start to fund things. Let's start to have an idea of where we're going and what we're gonna do. Let's, I mean, the stuff that I see bothers me. It just really does. You got programs that are being put together. And I saw something the other week where uh, a whole bunch of people just went ham on somebody because they spoke out against T.I.'s Trap Museum. And the argument that the person made was a valid argument from a so social perspective. I understand that it's a part of the history. It's a part of the true makeup. But is that what we want to be visualizing? There's a time and a place for everything. When you make something, when you immortalize something in a museum, you give it validity. You say it has value. When we talk about African history museums and slave museums, we're talking about a struggle of a strong people. We're giving it value, not in the sense of slavery, but in the sense of what, and, and so, We've got to be real careful in that balance of being free to sit up and say what you want to say and do what you want to do and understanding the consequences of doing it. I'm not going to pretend that the trap didn't exist. I'm not going to pretend that it's a bunch of people eating good now because of the trap legitimately eating good because of the trap. I'm not going to pretend that this hasn't been going on long before it was called a trap. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we have a responsibility to understand that our children are impressionable, that they are sucking up things, especially up until the age of five, and then they're developing and trying to aspire to what they place value on. They're going to naturally want to aspire to what they place value on. 
There's more in this world that can uplift our kids to exceptional heights financially, socially, politically, um, and everywhere else outside of being an athlete, outside of being um, a D-boy, outside of being an entertainer. There are so many other ways that they can go, and we need to open up all these doors for them. We need to glorify being a doctor. We need to glorify being an attorney. We definitely need to glorify being business owners. We need to glorify the importance of black men loving black women and black women loving black men, and that there needs to be a mutual love and respect that's taking place. We need to glorify because if we don't, that disunity is going to destroy us. Look on that note, I'm getting out of here. I said I wasn't gonna do that, wasn't gonna do that, that long, but I knew how passionate I was about that undercurrent. You know, yeah, I think we need to be calling people out who are unapologetically holding a position and moving a certain way. Now, if you, you you've moved and you've changed and you're trying to do something new, and you I can see it in you that to me that's different. It doesn't mean that you get to escape it, but I'm not out there chasing you drown, down, trying to tear you down. What I'm doing is I'm looking at where you're going and trying to see if there's a way I can help you get there. If you're sincere about doing something positive and uplifting in the community. I'm talking about people who are holding a position and stuff still seems to be happening around them. That's not good. Look, I'm going to get off of here. As I said, when I got on, if you believe in the work I'm doing, show some love and show some support. Uh, we have so much work to do in the community. We have so little support and everybody's expecting miracles. Every day I got people showing up and they're expecting me to be able to help them with what they're going through. And on the flip side of that, the support isn't there. So then it's left on me. Um, I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do it as judiciously as I can because I have uh, so many people depending on me and I have so many responsibilities. I've got to be true to that. Uh, there's so much I need to do and want to do moving forward, so I have to be true to that. But I'm going to be true to my commitment to my people, and I'm going to ask you to assist in that. Uh, the link to donate is in the description box, or you can give via Cash App. That's also in the description box. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here and uh, you guys wish me the best as I start this new chapter. Um, and I'm going all in. On that note, you guys take care.